Hey guys, it's Belinda. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a complex curve roof in Revit using Dynamo. So this is the final product we're trying to achieve and we're going to use two Dynamo scripts to get to this point. The first Dynamo script is going to create a curved roof attached to the top of all of these columns. The second Dynamo script is going to create structural ribs running in both directions. So here's a simple Revit project that I set up. I have five grid lines running in the north-south direction and four grid lines running in the east-west direction. At the intersection of each of these grid lines, I have a 12-inch column and each of these columns is at a different height. So we have 20 columns in total. I'll open up a new Dynamo script and I want to bring in all 20 columns into Dynamo. So I'm going to use the Select Model Elements node to do this. I want to bring the columns in five different batches in groups of four. So I'm just going to copy the select model elements over five times. For the first node, I'll select all the columns on grid line one. For the second node, all the columns on grid line two. For the third node, all the columns on grid line three. And the same for the fourth and the fifth node. When you run the script, you can see that each node now has the information of four columns. Now we want to create a simple list and we'll do that with the list create node. This list will hold the information of the five select model elements nodes. I'm going to link each one of them to the list create node. And when I run it, you can see a list of 20 columns was created. Now we want to extract the X, Y, and Z coordinate of the top of each of these columns. We'll use the element.geometry node to do that. When you run it, you can see that all 20 columns were brought into the Dynamo workspace. Now the issue is that there's no built-in parameter in these columns that will give you the X, Y, and Z coordinate of the top face. This element.geometry node just tells us that there are 20 solids in the workspace. So we're going to extract the coordinate of the top face in a different way. I'll create a face.vertices node and a vertex.pointgeometry node. Now when I run it, you can see that each of these columns has four points extracted from it. Two points at the bottom and two points at the top. Our vertex.pointgeometry node has 80 values because there are four points per column. So what we're going to do is draw a line from the bottom to the top of the column with the line dot by best fit through points node. And once we have that line, we're going to extract the end point using the curve dot end point node. Now when you run it, you can see that there were 20 endpoints extracted from the top of each of these columns. So while it's great that we've extracted the 20 endpoints, the resulting list we get from the curve.endpoints node has many sublists. So we need to clean it up. So what this is saying is that we have four levels in this list. L4 is the overall list and L3 is the sublist that we want. So we need to consolidate the information at level 1 and level 2 into level 3. I'll use a list flatten node to clean this up and I'll also create a code block for the amount and the code block is just going to say one. So in this node, we want to use levels instead and we want to clean it up up to level three. Now when you run it, you can see we have a cleaned up list of endpoints divided into groups of four, which is similar to our starting list. What we want to do now is create five curves running through all these endpoints and we'll do that with the poly curve by points node. I'll connect our flattened list to this node and run it. And you can see five curves were created, but they're very angular and they want to create a smooth roof. So instead of creating a poly curve, let's create a NURBS curve. I'll look for the NURBS curve node that will let me control the degree of curvature. I'll use a code block to control the degree. And you can see that if I set the degree to one, you get the same result as you would with the poly curve node. But if you change the degree to two, you get a smoother curve. What we want to do next is create a poly surface that lofts through all these NURBS curves. And we'll do that with the poly surface by loft node. Now, when you run it, you can see a smooth roof was created attached to the top of all of the columns. Now this roof is parametrically attached to the column. So if you change the height of the columns, the roof will change with it. So if we change this column from 15 feet to 12 feet and run the script again, you can see that the roof dropped. If I increase the height of this column from 15 feet to 24 feet and then run the script again, 
the roof then moves upward. We could technically thicken this poly surface node to create a roof using the surface.thicken node and using a code block to specify the thickness. But what we're going to do instead is export this poly surface into Revit and then create a roof in the Revit project. We're going to use the family instance by geometry node from the springs package. We want this surface to be exported as a generic family. So for the family template path, I'm going to navigate to the family templates and select the generic model family template. Next for the family name, I'll use the code block and just call it roof. We also need to specify the category. So I'm going to use a simple categories node and say that this is going to be a generic model. Now, when you run it, you'll see that the surface is now accessible in your Revit project and it can be manipulated. So I'll close Dynamo and create a roof in my Revit project using the surface as a starting point. I'll create a roof by face and make sure that the pick face is going to be at the bottom. And once the surface is selected, I'll create a roof. I'll delete the underlying surface because we don't need that anymore. Now you can see that some of these columns are either not touching the roof or running through it. To fix that, I'll select one of the columns and then right click, select all in a project. Under the modify column tab, I'm going to select attach top base and I'll use the bottom part of this roof as the base. So now we have the cleaned up columns and the curved roof. So now we're going to go into the second part of the video where we're going to create structural ribs. Let's start another Dynamo script to do that. We're going to use the grid lines as a starting point to create ribs. So I'll create a select model elements node to bring this into Dynamo. This second Dynamo script closely follows another YouTube video that I found and I'll link it in the description below. I want to isolate the grids so I'm not selecting the columns by mistake. To do that, I'll select one of the grids and then isolate that category. The next thing I'll do is use a select face node to select the underside of the roof so that the structural beams will run across it. Now we'll use a grid curve node to turn our grid lines into curves. So the idea is to extrude these curves in the Z direction and create planes that intersect the face of the roof. We'll use the curve extrude node with the direction and distance input as well. So we want the direction to be on the Z axis. So I'll create another node for that. And I'll use a code block to specify the distance, which I'll just set at 25. When you run it, you'll see that five planes were created in the Z axis, intersecting the roof. So what we're going to do next is create lines at those points of intersection. And we'll do that with a geometry.intersectAll node. I'll connect our five surfaces and our roof face to this node. When you run it, you can see that NURBS curves were created along the points of intersection. Let's flatten this list to clean it up. So we get a simple list of five NURBS curves. The next thing we need is a structural framing node. So we'll connect our NURBS curves to this node. We also need a level. So I'll use a NEVEL node and just specify level 2, but it doesn't really matter. And we also need a structural framing type. I only have one loaded into the project right now, so that will do. So let's run this Dynamo script and go back into our Revit project. You can see that underneath the roof that we made, we have structural beams running across in both directions. Now, a structural engineer would probably laugh at this attempt to design the structural beams, but this is just a graphical representation. Okay, that's it. Now we have our final output. There'll be a link in the description where you can download this Dynamo script for free. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, I'm Belinda. Thanks for watching.